Amen. How many of you came to magnify the Lord? How many of you came to praise His name? Not one time the songwriter said, Never will a rock and an animal or a, a material crowd in my place. I just want to praise the Lord. And you won't have to cry out in my place either because I know that when praises go up, blessings come down. And I'm going to to the Lord and I'm going to be able to say, never are you going to have to praise on my behalf. Because if I can open my mouth, I can give God a praise. If I can't open my mouth, if I can raise my hand, I can give God a praise. If I can't move nothing on my body, but I can bat my eyelashes, I can give God a praise. If my eyes won't back, won't go back, I can let a tear roll down my eye and give God a praise. Because he woke me up early this morning, started me on my way. I saw a brand new day. Everything went right, but everything was okay. And why was it okay? Because the Lord was on my side. And when I woke up this morning, I knew everything was going to be all right. The songwriter said, when I rose this morning, I knew the Lord would take care of me, would provide for me, would lead and guide me all the way. I don't know where all the way is, but wherever it is, I'm going all the way with the Lord. Come on, Shabbat the Lord in this place. I find the Lord. Tell him praise him. Praise his holy name. He worthy of all my prayers. Uh, uh. On Palm Sunday, Jesus told them, if they don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. It don't have to be Palm Sunday, but I'm still going to cry out. I believe that, that beautiful specimen that God made by the name of Celeste Chantel Brown Christ, my wife, is not here with me today because then the other beautiful specimen God made, Stephanie Brianna Price, has been under the weather since Wednesday and came out yesterday and sat in the office all day. And so my real baby, not Matthew, my real baby is not doing well. Matthew, that's just, that's just my boy. He happened to be the youngest. But my real baby, Stephanie, is not doing well. But we, and the officers and members of the Greater Grant Memorial AME Church, we just greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Let us, let us pray. God, help me to preach with power, with wisdom, with insight, with foresight and through the presence of Holy Spirit. And when it's all said and done, we'll all be careful to give you the honor, the praise, and glory. For truly greater is he that is in us than the one that is in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the book of Romans, chapter number 8, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 28 through 31 uh -huh. was read to you, but I'm going to focus on 31 through 39 and somewhat on 28. Third and first verse says, in the New Revised Standard Version, What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? The word of God for the people of God. And we all said, thanks be unto God. I want to preach and teach this morning from the subject, when God is with us. The 28th verse of this chapter says, which is one of my favorite verses in all of the Bible, and we know yeah, yeah. that with God on our side, and we know that when I'm gonna read their version, and we know that all that happens to us is working for our good. Uh -huh. If we love God and are fit fitting into his plans, so how many of you know that if you belong to God, Everything that has occurred in your life is working for your favor. All right, all right. Even when it doesn't look like it's working for your favor, while you're trying to figure it out in the language of the church of old, God is already working it out in your favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you know that in your life you are able to say what the songwriter said in the secular world? All I do is win, 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 win. All right, all right. Because when God is for us, there is no one or nothing that can stand against us. Because the God that is in us is standing up for us. So whatever is coming our way, whether it be 
a who, a what, a when, a where, or a why. We are assured because we have a blessed assurance that whatever it is, God is going to see us through it. The word of God says when God is with us, he's with us because he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, it tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God, and that all of these things will be added unto you. Now, the problem if, with the 21st century church is uh, they skip the first part of that verse in Matthew chapter number 6, uh, and they forget about the seeking part, uh, but they want God to do all the adding part. Uh, but you can't get to clause B where the blessing is uh, until you work by faith uh, and seek God, uh, and then God will add all these things to us. Uh, because when God is for us, uh, God wants the very best for us. Uh, that's why the next verse said, He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for us all, uh, will he not with him also give us everything else we need? Uh, that's why John 3 and 16 says, uh, For God so loved the world uh, that he gave us his only begotten son, uh, and whosoever believes in him uh, shall not perish, uh, but have uh, everlasting life. Uh, that's why Jesus said, uh, I came that you might have life uh, and have life uh, more abundantly. Uh, that's why the word of God says, If your earthly father uh, knows how to do good by you, and to give you the good things of life and to give you in life then how much more will your heavenly father provide for you and the bible says who will bring any charge against God's elect can I get everybody in the house who's God's elect to just throw your right hand up in the air and give God a praise wave because when you're God's elect that you have been chosen by God because of your faith in Jesus Christ. It is God who then justifies you. And I want you to know that you are justified even when you are justifiable. Well, what are you talking about, preacher? Now, I mean because of your faith in Jesus Christ. Justification has been placed on you. Not because of what you've done or who you are are sanctimonious uh, that you believe yourself to be uh, but it's because of the works of Jesus Christ uh, on the cross and the blood that was shed and, and the resurrection on the Sunday morning uh, and the confession out of your mouth and the belief in your heart uh, that he is the son uh, of the living God uh, you are justified uh, even when you're not justifiable uh, even when you sin by fault word or deed uh, he who will bring any charge against God's sons and daughters? It is God who justifies. Who is he that can bring condemnation? Who is to condemn God? Children. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Is there anybody in the house who can say when God is with us, we understand that Jesus uh, is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty uh, and that he's interceding for us uh, every word that comes out that it is not from God uh, when we should receive judgment uh, Christ is seated at the right hand uh, of God the Father uh, and he's pointing to Calvary uh, and an empty cross uh, and a blood stained mountain uh, he's pointing to an empty grave uh, and saying I paid the price uh, for the reconciliation I know they don't have it all together uh, but I've already interceded uh, on their behalf uh, and grace uh, and mercy uh, and compassion uh, and love uh, is what we get uh, when we should have had our just do uh, is there anybody in this house this morning uh, that's glad uh, that you have a savior uh, who's interceding for you uh, is there anybody in house this morning uh, who can testify uh, when I'm with God and when God is on my side uh, even when I mess up uh, God takes out his grace eraser uh, and it's almost like it never occurred uh, because there's still power 
power in the blood of Jesus. I just want to know if there's anybody in the house this morning who knows what it feels like to be interceded for. When God is with us, even when I slip and slide, even when I dip and dive, even when I mess up after I've been saved, I've got a Savior who intercedes for me. That's enough to shout off for right there. But maybe I'm talking to some people this morning who after you've gotten saved, you haven't had any issues in your life. I know the Bible says all of us sin by far word and deed. But maybe I'm preaching to some people this morning who don't understand what I'm talking about because they're under the false belief that since they met Jesus, everything in their life has been honky dory. Well, I came to pop that bubble right now. You better give God some praise for interceding on your behalf because when we belong to him, we get his intercession. Uh, he says, who will separate us uh, from the love of Christ? Uh, will hardship or distress or uh, persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Uh, as it is written, uh, for your sake we are being killed uh, all the day long. Uh, we are counted as sheep uh, for the slaughter. Now, uh, I want you to know I, I've seen some people who said that uh, I'm with God because God uh, is for me. Uh, but when the least little bump comes in the road. We start questioning God. We start running away from God. We start wondering if God is truly God. We start wondering if John 316 is a real word of God. Well, I can't buy to tell you that if you love God, hardship and distress and persecution and famine and nakedness and peril and sword should drive you away from God. Should draw you into God because when God is with us, it doesn't matter who comes our way or what comes our way. The same God who brought us through yesterday is the same God who's gonna bring us through today. Oh, give somebody in this house, give God some glory in him. Somebody who's been through a hardship didn't know how you were gonna make it. Somebody who's had their Somebody who's been down in the muck and the miry clay. Somebody who's been sick and thought you weren't going to get well. Somebody who's still got a broken heart of a loved one who has transformed and transitioned out of this life into that glorified life. Somebody who lost a job and didn't know how you were going to make it. Somebody who could not their cell phone, went on to their electronic banking account and saw that was in a negative, but you were unemployed without social security age, without a pension, without full sense of welfare, but you saw God make a way out of no way, turn that negative balance into a positive balance, brought you out of the red and put you into the black. Why don't you give God a praise? Because you know when God is with us, who can be against us? Uh, the writer says, as it is written, uh, for your sake, uh, we are being killed all the day long. Uh, we are counted as sheep uh, to be slaughtered. Uh, but no, uh, in all these things, uh, we are more than conquerors uh, through him uh, who loved us. Uh, I want y'all to catch the last part of that. Uh, you are not a conqueror by yourself uh, because when God is with you, uh, you are a conqueror uh, through him that loves us. Uh, and that is Jesus Christ. Uh, that is Elohim, uh, God the Father, the Son, and uh, Holy Spirit. Uh, what can we say uh, about all of this stuff uh, and everything that is happening all around us uh, in our personal lives, on our job, in our health, uh, in our finances, most of all, in our walk with God, uh, in all these things that are happening around us, you've got to remember that you're more than a conqueror uh, through Christ Jesus uh, who loves you. Uh, and because you're more than a conqueror, uh, you ought to be convinced uh, like the Roman writer was. He says, for I am convinced uh, that neither death uh, nor life uh, nor angels uh, nor rulers uh, nor things present uh, nor anything that is to come uh, nor powers uh, nor height uh, nor depth. Uh, in other words, he said, I don't care how high it gets or how low it goes. Uh, I'm convinced uh, that everything's going to be all right in God. Uh, he said, nor anything else uh, in all of creation. Uh, and can I add to it? Uh, nor anybody. 
Jesus our Lord. I call my name because I don't know how you feel about God today. I don't know what you're going through in life, but I want you to know every time I feel like I've been counted on and counted out, all it does is draw me closer to God. Every time you talk about me, every time you scandalize my name, every time you lie on me, every time you backstab me, all I'm doing is like that proverbial mule who was trapped down in the well. All it's doing is hitting my shoulders and all I'm doing is shaking it off and stomping it down. And when God gets through pressing it out, I'm going to be where I'm supposed to be. I don't know what I've been in. I'm still going to be trusting God. you still going to be talking. I'm still going to be elevated in God. you still going to be talking about me. But I ain't going to let you or nobody else separate me from the love of God. Because it was the love of God that rescued me. For when I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, seeking to rise no more, very deeply stained within, love lifted me. When nothing else would work, love lifted me. The Bible says, the author said, what then are we to say about all this stuff? If God is for us, who can be against us? I don't know who he is. I don't know where who came from. I don't know where who originated from. But who can be against us when God is for us? Who can injure us? Us. Sinners may be against us, and so may the great enemy of our souls. But the power, their power to destroy us is taken away by the blood of Jesus. God is more mighty than all our foes and enemies. He can defend us. He can save us. He can deliver us. He can heal us. He can make a way for us. He can promote us. He can elevate us. He can rise us up. He can pick us up off the dusty road and put us on the golden road. Is there anybody in the house who can testify this morning when God is on my side I can do anything but fail. Is there anybody in the house who can testify this morning that the Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. Can I put a pin right there? You ought to stop putting so much value in what other people have to say. You ought to stop putting so much value in that person that you've given authority in your life to tell you who you are or whether you're doing well enough or not. Let me tell you, if you're pleasing God to help them in their opinion. They got an opinion and everybody does who's got a mouth and can open it. But the Bible says that life and death lie in the tongue. And if you can't speak life to me, then don't speak over me. If you don't speak death about me, God's blood will make sure life is spoken over me. Is there anybody in the house today who believes that nothing can stand against you with God on your side? No obstacles, no hardship, no opposition that people will face in life. Not tribulation, not distress, not persecution, not famine, not nakedness, peril or sword. Somebody said, preach them. Well, how can you say that with absolute confidence? I can say it because the song is said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom? Shall I be afraid when the wicked came upon me, my enemies and my foes, to eat up my flesh? Y'all know what happened. They stumbled and fell. The ditch they dug, they wound up in. The trap they set, they fell into. Is there anybody who knows that when God is on their side, should camp against us. Your heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this, I will be confident. For one thing, I have desired of the Lord, and that 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple because trouble will come but when God is on our side when trouble comes he shall hide me in the secret of his tabernacle he shall set me up on a rock for again I want to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple for in the time trouble. God's going to hide me in his pavilion. Is there anybody who knows that when God is on your side that when the troubles of life arise, God's got a pavilion for your safety. Why don't you give God some praise? And when you're hiding in the pavilion, after he set you up on a rock, you do know that that rock is Jesus Christ. He's a rock a weary land. He's the rock of the problem. He's the rock that he told Peter upon this rock. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail because when God is on my side he keeps on making a way for us. And when God is on your side you can speak the words of the 27th song and say hear O Lord when I cry with my voice also upon me and answer me when thou saidest seek ye my face my heart said unto you my face Lord will I seek because you're on my side you've been on my side you've got a record that proves you make everything alright hide not thy face from me put your servant not away in anger God has been my help Lord, can anybody's help in this house? Leave me not, neither forsake me. Oh, God of my salvation. Listen when it gets so hard that mom and daddy leave me alone. Don't worry, because then the Lord will take you up. Teach me thy way, O oh Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of my enemies because when you're on my side you make my enemy my footstool for false witnesses are risen up against me and such is breathing out cruelty but because God is on my side I can declare like King David the shepherd boy I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait, children of the Lord, and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, of the Lord, because when God is on our side, who can stand against us? When God is on our side, who can say anything against us? When God is on our side, who can stop when God is on our side, who can say anything to separate us from the love of God? And since God is on my side, I can sing and say and recite that song about my shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't know about you, but I shall not want He maketh me to lie down. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul because sometimes I get weak. Sometimes I get weary. Sometimes my soul needs to be restored. Is there anybody who knows when God is on your side that he'll restore your soul? the 
shadow of death I will fear no evil my Christ won't you fear because he is with me his rod and his staff it comforts me y'all ready for this one they talking about us brother Dante they talking about us brother Bush they talking about us Reverend Morgan they talking about us sister Corinne
God be for you. There's not even a devil in hell that can be against you. If you don't know God as your Lord and Savior, I stand before you now. Giving you the opportunity to come and give the pastor your hand. Love the hair.